around a few months ago, I have covered the topic FIDATA, which is possibly the easiest way to create autonomous AI assistance with function calling. I highly recommend you watch my previous video on it as it goes further in depth on the framework. Throughout today's video, we're going to explore the new upgrades of this framework, demonstrating how you can build intricate autonomous AI systems with long-term memory, contextual knowledge, and the ability to take actions through function calling. Check out the video demo by the creator of FIDATA, where he shows how to build agents with GPT-40 from scratch, including a web search agent, finance agent, and many other types. Just take a look. Hey everyone, it's Sashpreet, and today let's build autonomous assistants, aka agents, from scratch. We'll take GPT-4 and give it a bunch of tools, like searching the internet, sending an email, querying cloud APIs, that'll enable it to take a problem and solve it for us. We'll make it do web search, we'll make it write Python scripts, we'll make it do data analysis, and a lot more. But I want to walk through this process step by step, so let's get started. The code for what we're going to be doing today is under the FIDATA repo, so fork and clone this repository, and you'll find the code under the cookbook assistance folder. Again, I ask you to fork and clone it so you can make it your own. It's completely open source. Customize it to your taste and play around with it. So after you've cloned it, open the repo up in the code editor of your choice under the cookbook assistance folder, and also fire up your terminal with the Python virtual environments. This are, these are basic steps in the readme, which you can follow, but let's get with what we're building today. So the first thing which we're going to be doing today is building an assistant, and then we'll add tools to it. Now with FIDATA, we can build AI assistants that can take any LLM and add memory, knowledge, and tools to that assistant. The tools are the piece that make it autonomous and turn it into an agent. We personally don't like calling them agents because it sounds like an FBI agent. We call them assistants because they assist us with our day-to-day -day tasks. So first, a basic assistant without any tools. It takes an LLM and we give it a description and instructions and tell it what to do. We then can ask it to print a response to the CLI or it can also run this query, this input, if it's part of an application. So once you have your assistant built out, we can run it using Python, Cookbook Assistance Basic, and it will run this assistant for us. It's using the GPT-40 model, which is fast and good. It's one of the best models in the market right now, and it'll give us a simple breakfast recipe. Now I'm gonna show you how this works if you wanna use some other model, like a local one. Just import that model from FileLM. Let's do a local, import Olama. And instead of using the OpenAI chat LLM, let's do Olama and model equal to Llama 3. And this should use a locally running Llama 3 model with this assistant to give us the response. It's taking a second longer because it's firing up the local model, but here it is. It should be faster after this now. Okay, so this is a basic assistant with no tools. Now we can add some extra functionality to it. Let's give it the ability to search the web. We will import the DuckDuckGo tool. It's free of use, so it's good to use. From Fire Tools DuckDuckGo and add it to our assistant. Over here, we're not gonna give it any description, any instructions, but we will set the show tool calls parameter to true because we want to see the tool calls happening behind the scenes. We're gonna give it a task, search for the news from France and write a short poem about it. And we're going to kick it off with running cookbook assistance web search. And it'll run that assistant for us. As you can see behind the scenes, it's running the DuckDuckGo news tool. It's getting the news from France and then writing a nice little poem for us. I kind of like it. Okay, let's get into something more complex. Let's build a finance assistant for us. And we're gonna give it the Yahoo Finance tool by importing from Fi Tools your finance. And each tool when you have with FiData doesn't add everything it has. It You can click on it and see the function that it had access to behind the scenes. So this Yahoo Finance tool can get the stock price, get the company info, fundamentals, and a lot of other things. We disable most things by default because we just don't want to overload the LLM because all of these functions, these tools are being sent to the LLM in its system prompt. It uses a lot of tokens. We don't want to overload that. So we let the user choose what they want. So this one, which is our finance assistant, 
We'll say get stock price, get recommendations, company info, company news. We're going to give it two tasks, we'll run it behind the scenes, and I'm going to talk through the tasks with you. We're going to give it two tasks. What's the stock price of NVIDIA? A simple function call would do here. And then write a comparison between NVIDIA and AMD. Use all the tools available. So over here, we want the LLM to be to see, okay, these are the tools I have available. And I want to produce a report after that. So let's see the first one. So in the first one, what's the stock price? It ran one tool, gave it the stock price. Fantastic, exactly what we're looking for. 2.2 seconds, which is very, very fast. I'm loving GPT-40 right now. And then the second task we have is write a comparison between NVIDIA and AMD. Use all the tools. You can see it's running all of these tools in parallel. Isn't that fantastic? Like the models are getting more and more powerful. I don't even know what's going to happen by 2027. Like imagine GPT-40, but two, three, five times smarter with a million to 10 million token context window. And um, suddenly it feels like we're in the, you know, eight uh, kbps internet speed era again. Okay, so let's see the report it's written. It's written a comparison, that's what we asked for. It gave us a company overview. It gave, for NVIDIA, it gave us a summary. For AMD, it gave us a company overview and summary. It gave us analyst recommendations for each. It gave us recent news for each. And it gave us a summary of these two comparisons. A very, very good answer, again, from GPT-40. Uh, now I wanna show that, you know, a lot of times you will most likely want to build your own tools. You're not going to use the default tools. They're great to play with, get a hang of things, but you will write your own APIs, especially if you're building AI as part of your company product. You will write tools to access your internal APIs. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the example we're going to take today is the Hacker News API. It's freely available, so good to test, but you can put any sort of Python code in here. We will describe what this function does. We're gonna say, use this function to get top stories from Hacker News. We have to add the arguments in return. So whatever you add in the doc string, FireData is gonna take that information and format it in a way in which the LRM can understand. Create our assistant as always, give it the tools, show two calls because we wanna see it and set markdown as true, which adds a uh, instruction, hey, return the answer in markdown format. And then we're gonna say, summarize the top stories on Hack News. Now, another thing which I wanna do behind the scenes is set debug mode here. Debug mode as true will print all the debug logs, which is very handy when you wanna see what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, so let's run this. So now you can see the debug logs are enabled, the C assistant run, the functions added to the LLM, then the response is starting. This is our system prompt. You must follow these instructions carefully, use mock to format your answers. So any more instructions we add are gonna be added as a numbered list here, which we found works better. You can use your own system prompt. Then the user message is the summary of the top stories on Hack News. Assistant says, okay, to achieve this task, you're gonna call this function, which you gave me. We run that function and then send it another message as, as with the answer of that function. So this is the start of the second response. The system message, user message, assistant message, tool call, then the assistant returns the response with the result. So now we made two API calls to the LLM behind the scenes, which FireData handles for you and behind, you know, seamlessly. So over here you can see the result we see without the, without the debug mode. So it's a summary, it summarizes everything, fantastic. Exactly what we are looking for. Now let's get into something a little more interesting. So we, this is one of my favorite assistants. I was a data engineer for most of my life. So I've been doing a write, write a lot of Python and SQL code. So this DuckDB assistant uses DuckDB to analyze data in CSV files, Parquet files, and it works very well. So let's, this DuckDB assistant, we're gonna say GPT-40 is your model. This is the semantic model. We're gonna tell it that, okay, you have access to these tables. And first, give me the average rating of movies. Show me a histogram of ratings. And let's see what it does. So over here, what it's going to do is it has access to everything from DuckDB. So it's saying, I'm gonna see the tables first. Table doesn't exist. Let me create the table with this file. DuckDB can automatically load it. And then it runs the query to get that answer. Look at that. Isn't that truly like amazing, the era we're living in? Now in the next one, it's doing something a little more complex. It is going to 
create a histogram for us and we're asking you to choose a bucket size depending on the data. So with that data, it is choosing a bucket size of 0 0.5. First, it's gonna show tables, then it's going to run a query for histogram, and then it's gonna generate that histogram for us, and then it's gonna show the query. Absolutely fantastic, beautiful work by GPT-40. Last one, I'm gonna keep this video under 10 minutes, is the research assistant. This is a little more interesting because it uses EXA to do a search of the web, bring that information in, and generate a report for us in a format we provide. And we also are asking it to save that output to a file. So we're gonna ask it to write a report on OpenAI GPT-4 and save the output to a file. And while that's going on, I'm gonna to talk to you about the assistant. So the description is that you're a senior New York Times researcher writing an article. Instructions are for this topic, search for the top 10 links, read the results carefully, and then prepare a article. In this format, we're also telling it this is the format we want, a rough outline. And then we're saying, save the output to a news articles markdown file. And look at that, it wrote that article for us, it wrote a very, very nice article about GPT-4, the dawn of multimodal AI. Uh, it's giving us a step-by-step, -step, okay, this is how what happens from GPT-3 to GPT-4. Then came the age of GPT-4.0. These are the references I use. Performance, beautiful work. Now let's see if it generated that file for us under the scratch folder. It did. This research article is in a very well formatted markdown file for us. Great work by GPT-4 again. All right, everyone. This is an introduction to how to build your own autonomous assistants or agents. There's also a Python assistant, but I will let you play with that on uh, by yourself. The video is already getting way too long. So test these out. If you have any questions, drop by the Discord, open a GitHub issue, and hope you have a great day. Bye. That was definitely an amazing tutorial by the creator of FiData. The reason I wanted to feature his video prominently is because he thoroughly showcased how to build AI agents with GPT-40. He integrated various new features and made it super easy to build these agents with any model you choose. You can take a look at the examples he has provided, where you can deploy the base examples and add different features or your own code to personalize it according to your preferences. This framework is quite extendable, allowing you to build and customize it further. I'll leave all the links from today's video in the description below. You should definitely check them out. Make sure to watch my previous video to understand more about this framework and get more ideas. I hope you found this video beneficial and gained some knowledge or value from it. Ashbury did a great job showcasing how you can build AI agents from scratch. But with that thought, guys, follow me on Twitter to stay updated with the latest AI news right away. Lastly, make sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell like this video, and check out our previous videos to stay up to date with the latest AI news. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys soon.